Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. We're in wonderful sunny Arizona and I'm here with Buzz. Buzz, good to see you again. Hey Lou, welcome to Arizona. And Buzz has got some great cars and as I've just arrived, I said, Buzz, can I come out and see his car? And you're gonna see why I wanted to see his car. So I'm gonna grab the camera. Buzz, right off the bat, how long have you had this car? I've owned this car for seven years. Uh, it's kind of an interesting story. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I got it in my head that I wanted to own a Studebaker. I like the uh, the orphan cars. And uh, uh, for my 60th birthday, I told my wife I'm going to get myself a, a Studebaker for my 60th birthday. And uh, so I joined the Studebaker Club and I found this car. Uh, it was in uh, uh, Kansas. Uh, one of the club members was selling it. And I bought it sight unseen. I just had it shipped down here. and. Uh, uh, had a lot of fun with it and uh, my wife actually surprised me and uh, she ended up paying for it herself. For wow. Me. So that was, that was Good a wife. Bonus. Yeah, really. Tell me about it. Uh, so this is <laughs> my right, six, come 16th come birthday. Yeah, come me. alongside me. Let's get right to what the wife bought you. Man, now everybody on the camera is jealous. I'll tell you that right now. Wow. This is a, go ahead, come on, come on closer to me. Tell me what we have here. It's a 1963 Studebaker Gran Turismo Hawk, also known as a GT Hawk. Uh, they were built for three years, 62, 63, and 64. Um, and this was kind of Studebaker's uh, personal luxury car. Um, 63 is the year they came out with the Avanti, which was their entry into the sports car field. Um, but the GT Hawk was uh, uh, more their comparable to perhaps a, uh, a Thunderbird um, in the personal luxury car market and uh, this car is powered by a 289 V8. Studebaker made their own engines in South Bend, Indiana. It's got uh, a three-speed on the column with overdrive. I had never driven a three-speed in my life until I bought this car. Really? Uh, and let me tell you, it is fun to drive. Well, people are going to hear what it sounds like too in a second, but uh, this is the beauty of, uh, I, first of all, the front end looks a little Mercedes-like back in that day, and then it has those nice, I'm going to point it out so you know what we're talking about, these nice curves right in here, which show sports car. Why, why the red, white, and blue on this tag here? That's a, That's a standard thing for those cars, but why? I, I'm not really sure other than uh, the Gran Turismo uh, emblem. Yeah. It's basically what they chose, the red, white, and blue. Yeah, they have it on uh, each on of the, the doors On also. the door, yeah, let me just kind of feature that. But the script looks great, and very rarely do you see script on a door. I well, mean, I'll usually you see it on a fender. If I had a dollar for everybody that came up to me and said, is that a Gran Torino? <laughs> Everybody thinks it's like Gran Torino from the movie. Yeah. And it's hard to read, so I have to explain everybody. Gran no, Turismo. It's not a Torino, it's a Turismo. Turismo. All right. And then that real unique roof line here, how it's straight, and then that chop, very Thunderbird like, yes? That's exactly right. Uh, you uh, Very observant. Uh, actually, the legend has it that uh, Studebaker took their uh, 61 Hawk and uh, the designers took the roof off of a uh, 61 Thunderbird and put it on there to see what it would look like and they loved the way the roof line looked uh, so in 1962 they came out with this all new model the GT Hawk with the formal roof line. Was the dual exhaust uh, standard for this yes. issue? Oh my yes, gosh. Those are called, called exhaust deflectors. And exhaust deflectors. The, uh, GT Hawk. Look at that. Look at this beautiful emblem, too. Buzz, I, I know your cars are all like really, really nice. Now, here is some nice curving in the back here, too, coming off the trunk. And yep. I, I, such a unique little stainless piece back here with the Studebaker Hawk. So there's no question what you have in these little taillights. Very almost romantic. <laughs> and then the wonderful little <laughs> chrome piece along the... Well, let's take a look at the interior, shall we? May you open it, please? Even this wonderful Hawk badge here. As I just walk around the car, I mean, there's just so much to a thick door. Let me just show. It's it's, uh, it's got some some thickness to it. It sounds solid. Yeah, I, I've never driven a Studebaker uh, 
before I bought this car, and I'm really impressed with the uh, uh, workmanship and the, uh, the the quality of the car. It's very very well built. It's got bucket seats, but it's got a little section there in the center, so your your wife can just jump over there and sit right next to you if she needs to. Yeah, it was also available with a uh, four-speed, which would have been on the, the floor in front of the console there. Or you could have got uh, a three-speed automatic on the column. But again, this has the standard shift on the column. The standard shift on the column. And the dash is really well done around that. It has the a complete uh, gauge package, which was optional to, uh, to have all of those gauges. Yeah, it's really nice. It's wonderful. I'm going to kind of emboss there. And it has factory air conditioning. That's they the factory air. Holy the cow. Under dash, uh, air at the time. You know what I'm finding fasc fascinating? Fastened seat belts in 63. That was not necessarily so stylish, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it was I don't like, think they were mandatory in 63. Uh, I don't think they were. No. It was maybe another year or two off before they were mandatory. In 63, it was like, get these seat belts out of the way. They're, <laughs> they're creeping up my, my pant leg, so to speak. All right. But the, uh, the roof line has nice chrome pieces in it as well. And everything wonderfully decorated. Let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Sure. Even the, even the door. Inside hood release. And a wonderful <coughs> ornament. Let me see how the... Now one thing about the design of this hood, because, yeah. because of the big, huge nose and uh, chrome radiator grill that uh, comes down, it's very, very heavy. And Studebaker could not efficiently counterbalance this hood, so it uses, uses a prop rod to keep the hood up. Okay. Which is kind of old-fashioned, but well, you're a pretty big guy, Buzz. For God's sakes, you can handle this. <laughs> no problem. But not for the not for the faint of heart. This is the uh, Studebaker 289 with uh, four barrel. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was rated at uh, 220 horse with the uh, four barrel. Uh, you could have also got this car with uh, a supercharger. Really? Uh, which would have been uh, uh, pretty, pretty fast. I get the feeling it's probably pretty fast right now. Yeah, you know, it's it's a it's, it's a, not a barn it's not a race car. Yeah. Um, Is this the Vintag? This right here? That's 63V K6? That's a good question. I, I honestly don't I mean, know. 63 would probably mean the, you know, the, the, the model year and K6, I'm not sure. Let's, uh, while we got the hood up, let's start her up. Sure. And I'll get a little exhaust note. It's got a nice uh, little rumble to it. Okay, I like nice little rumble. Mm -hmm. I'm all in favor. Performance engines, uh, the valve colors would have been chrome. Okay. Uh, but uh, this engine is it's pretty stock. Uh, the only thing we've done is replace the generator with an alternator, um, and we put a radiator overflow uh, uh, vest, uh, vessel on it so that uh, with the heat down here, in case it overflows, you don't want to lose all your coolant. Yeah. Let me have you jump in. Just give me a little rumble. It sounds like we need to kick it down just a notch. It's actually cool in here.
We'll shut it down. Let's have you shut the hood. While you're doing that, I'm going to get an overall shot of the car. Let's stand right next to her there. Buzz, do me a favor. Thank your wife for me because she is a good gift getter. I'll tell you that. That's a good woman you've got right there. Congratulations on hitting your car that you wanted and for uh, having such a wonderful time. Thanks for being on My Car Story. Thank you, Lou.